What is up guys? It has been a minute since I've sort of just picked up the camera and vlogged and the reason for that, uh, as some of you will know, is not a whole lot of shit has been going on in my life while being put out of the gym, put out of bodybuilding, putting all those goals on hold basically. To summarize quickly, I had three incidences in a very short period of time, all requiring surgery and all somewhat different. So the first issue I had was an intestinal issue which caused a blockage, which had to be cleared through basically shoving a tube down my nose, which was fun. The second issue was I had a motorbike accident, didn't take care of um, the injury right on my lower back was just like a scratch. The barley bacteria here is pretty savage and it got infected. Basically the infection was growing faster than my body could deal with it. And it had to have surgery to basically get the infection cut out. Then in less than four weeks, I had a very peculiar infection, basically next to my ball sack. Not really sure how it happened. Predict that perhaps it was sitting down in the sauna. Like obviously saunas are pretty fucking dirty places. People are sweating, they're going there after the gym. I just wonder if I had like something small under there that allowed some bacteria to get in. I do think that perhaps my immune system was compromised from the earlier infection. Three injuries, a total of about 12 weeks off, which has rocked me like you would not believe. I haven't taken a month off exercise since I think I was a fucking toddler in nappies. You can imagine where my mental well-being has been since sort of being put out for so long and having to spend a shitload of time on the couch. So the purpose of this video, I think, is just to document the perspectives that I had during the injuries, the illness, the setbacks, things that were really challenging, things that allowed me to move through it and cope with it. So firstly, I'll just touch on how mentally shook I was and how rough a long-term injury can be when you're basically putting all your eggs in one basket, so to speak, and that's what I was doing. My whole day was structured around training, eating, recovering, and anything that sort of got in the way of that, I really tried to avoid those situations. Basically, I had my whole 2022 mapped out to like month by month exactly what I was gonna do. And I felt like I had a fucking great plan. And then about three weeks went by and I got injured badly like with serious setbacks. And all of a sudden, this whole 12 month plan that I had written out, basically thrown in the trash. Like one of the pieces taken out and then all of the other pieces were basically lost their place as well. So that first part of like the extreme frustration that my whole year plan was sort of in jeopardy, extremely, extremely frustrating. It was the hardest period of the whole process where it would just be in this state of denial, asking questions like, why me? Why did this happen to me? Why am I so unlucky and things like that? And it's sort of like a purposeless stage in the phases of like coping with loss because it doesn't help process at all. It doesn't make you recover any faster. It certainly doesn't make you feel any better. The faster that you can get through that stage, I think the better. That phase is where like I was really fucking angry. Didn't want to talk to anyone. Didn't want to be on social media. Like I just wanted to disconnect with anything because I was in complete like fuck this mode. Uh, but once you do get through that, comes the stage of acceptance. And once you're into that acceptance stage, it becomes a hell of a lot easier. To so I wanted to touch on the most difficult things that made me feel worse about my injuries and illness and where I was at. First thing was being on social media. Like you can imagine the sort of people I follow, people involved in the fitness industry, people training, people dieting, working towards their goals. Seeing that, on a day-to-day -day basis, that just made matters worse because if the cookies aren't in your house, you're probably not thinking about fucking cookies. You go to the cupboard and you see a big fresh jar of cookies in there, you're probably gonna want some fucking cookies. And that's the same with training and, and dieting and things like that. It's like when you see people doing what you really, really wanna be doing and that you can't be doing at this stage, 
it makes it a hell of a lot more frustrating. So if you are struggling with it, just try to reduce your social media scrolling. Another thing that was really difficult for me was having too much free time. With my whole day structured around like training twice a day sometimes, all my meals, my recovery, my day was anchored around those bodybuilding elements. And when that's all taken away, all of a sudden I just had these four, five, six extra hours where they weren't allocated towards doing productive things. And the danger of having too much free time is that it just allows your mind to run wild and when your mind is not preoccupied that's when it can sort of go down the rabbit hole it can make matters worse you feel shittier about your situation more frustrated that you can't do anything about it With too much free time you're you just become hyper focused on the negatives associated with your situation. I would recommend trying to find new activities that you can do to keep yourself busy, keep your mind occupied, so you don't run uh, down that rabbit hole into despair. Some things that also helped was being more social. In the past, I've been on the mindset as like, less socializing is better for bodybuilding. And if you do too much socializing, there's gonna be a trade off with your progression somewhere. Uh, but what I did discover, uh, basically because I had to, because I had to figure out ways to use up my free time, was that I could actually do social things and go down to the beach and have a coconut with friends or, or go out to dinner and, and things like that. I think it's going to be valuable for sort of my next months ahead and just understanding that, okay, I can do some social things without fucking up my whole bodybuilding week like I used to think. A big thing, uh, which certainly helped was just not checking my body weight or looking at myself in the mirror. If you are of a reasonably advanced level in bodybuilding and carry a decent amount of muscle mass, your weight is going to plummet after a few weeks. Outside of the gym, you're gonna lose intramuscular fluid, uh, you're gonna use, lose some muscle tissue, and basically you're just gonna see that scale take a downward plummet. Checking the scale each day and watching go down, 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 down is just not helpful. I would recommend just putting the scale away in the cupboard and not even worry about it because looking at it is not going to be helpful at this stage when you are basically completely put out of the gym for an extended period of time. And the same thing with your look. You are going to look shittier, shittier, shittier the longer the rehab period goes. Looking at yourself in the mirror, it's not even worth it. Keep your fucking shirt on. Don't look at yourself until you can sort of be back in the gym for a few weeks and you're going to start to recoup some of those lost gains. Hello. Alrighty guys, I am back for my second meal of the day. I had planned to document some of the training from my first session of the day, but I did not charge my camera, so it died. First vlog back, didn't charge the battery, dickhead. You would have seen from me answering the door, this meal was delivered. Now this is class A barley right here. The quality of the food that you can get delivered is unparalleled. So what I have here is 150 grams of sirloin steak, two scrambled eggs, 150 grams of caramelized pumpkin, 100 grams of steamed mushrooms, two slices of multi-grain bread, and 25 grams of peanut butter. I don't know anywhere in the world where you can get that sort of food with this quality delivered to your door for a dollar delivery fee. Completely absurd. So my first meal of the day, my pre-workout meal was very simple, it was just two scoops of whey with collagen and glutamine and creatine. Having the collagen and the glutamine to potentially help with the healing uh, of my wounds, my scars and some of the tissue underneath those scars specifically. And then I had 100 grams of cream of rice with just some berries and cinnamon. So. Obviously not eating as much as I was on my previous videos. I'm gonna eat this and then give you guys a little bit of a rundown of how my nutrition was structured during my illness and my rehab and what my plans are sort of moving forward. What do you want? What's going on with my macros, man? Don't you waste that. So 
I wanted to talk quickly about how you should structure your eating when you're going through a large setback or some time out of the gym because I feel like it isn't discussed too often. So basically we have three main options I guess when it comes to nutrition. The first one is to bulk, try and build muscle. Second one to cut, try and lose fat. Third one, just to try and maintain a muscle tissue and a fat tissue. For obvious reasons, trying to bulk when you're out of the gym and have a calorie surplus is just a terrible idea because you'll get fat very quickly with minimal additional muscle. The same can sort of be said for trying to cut when you're outside of the gym because when you're not training, you're not providing the muscle with a stimulus to stay around. So when you are in a deficit, low food, uh, it's basically a recipe for very easy muscle loss. So I guess that leaves us with the obvious option to try to maintain when we're going through a setback. But while maintaining sounds fantastic in theory, it doesn't really work in practice. Specifically if you're of an advanced level lifter who carries a, a good amount of muscle mass. So generally when we're going through a maintenance phase, we just look at our body weight and if it's going up, we bring calories down and if it's going down, we bring calories up until we basically find a, a calorie level that keeps our body weight relatively stable with the assumption that we're maintaining our muscle mass and maintaining our body fat. But you need to remember that if you are an advanced lifter who carries a lot of muscle, you're going to lose massive amounts of intramuscular fluid, intramuscular glycogen, and if you're coming from a bulking phase, a lot of extracellular fluid. Now, if you try to eat up to resist that weight loss and you keep seeing the scale go down and down and down, it doesn't mean you're in a deficit, it's just a fluid loss. And now eating up to resist that is just gonna mean that you pile on a massive amount of body fat very, very quickly, and you're gonna be finishing your rehab phase really fucking fat with still reduced muscle mass. That's not where you want to be. So this basically flows on to how did I manage my nutrition during my setback period. So basically what I decided to do was I was going to have four meals per day, make sure that each of those meals had 50 grams of protein around about, and that the calorie count of those meals uh, from estimation did not exceed 1000 and outside of that the only real meal considerations were what did I feel like eating now You gotta remember that I was coming off a period of 5300 calories So coming down to sub 4000 is a pretty big step down now Some people might listen to that and think geez, that's so unprecise That's going to be suboptimal blah 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 But you need to remember that when you're not training no dietary protocol in the world specifically if you're an advanced level is going to prevent you from losing muscle mass you're going to lose it at least if you're out of it for four, five, six weeks like like I was. And you're probably gonna lose a fair chunk. A lot of the visual impairment will be due to that fluid loss, but there is absolutely gonna be some tissue loss as well if you are of an advanced level. If you're a newbie, beginner, only a couple of years deep, it's probably not gonna to be too noticeable. When we're going through a setback or an illness injury and we really love the gym and the process, then we're gonna have quite a disturbed mental state, well-being. Now, adding additional psychological stress from trying to be extremely rigid with macros down to the gram, calories to a specific single number, six meals per day, meal plan approach. That is just not worth it in my books. We're already stressed out, we already feel shit, and adding that extra stress on top is just not beneficial because the cons are going to outweigh the benefits. An additional benefit of just taking a slightly more backseat approach with your nutrition, not being so anal like we normally are, when we're going through a bulking phase or a cutting phase is that it's just gonna give us a little bit of mental rest. Being very rigid um, when it comes to our nutrition, while it is effective for the body composition aesthetic results, it is mentally taxing and it is draining. So when you're out of the gym can be a good time to just refresh the mental state as well. So when you are recovered, when your injuries have healed up, you are damn ready to drop the hammer and put the foot down to the floor. Meal three situation going down. As you have seen, my meals three, five, and six come in paper boxes. And that is, of course, the meals are ordered. So four of my six meals that I'm having each day are not prepared by myself. And that is purely just to save me time. Buying food from restaurants is not super expensive here. The little bit of extra that I pay for getting the meals from restaurants is just worth it in my mind when I consider the amount of time that it frees up for me to be able to 
redistribute to more important things like my client check-ins and work projects. So this is my pre-workout meal for my second session of the day. Uh, it's 250 grams of rice, 120 grams of barbecue eggplant, 100 grams of beans, and 170 grams of shredded chicken. And certainly way better than anything that I could <clears throat> prepare. So I'm gonna get this meal down and then head off to the gym. Hopefully I can get some clips this time, but it's gonna be nothing too amazing. Like I said, still working back up. Uh, and perhaps in my post-workout meal, I'll just touch on how I'm structuring my comeback into training and some of the major fuck-ups I did last time when I was coming back from my first and second injury. So we talked about mindset around setbacks, talked about nutrition around setbacks. And just to finish, I want to lastly speak about training around setbacks. So I'm going to start with what not to do and touch on some of the mistakes that I made when coming back from one of my earlier injuries. Now, when we love the gym, when we're very attached to our goals and we are prevented from working towards them, i.e. with an injury or illness, we can become hyper-focused on the comeback and the desire to apply maximum effort in that first session, that first week back, basically increases exponentially the longer and longer we're kept outside of the gym. Going back into the gym full cork with 100% intensity after having a four to six, seven week layoff like I did, is probably not a smart move. Basically, our body has not been exposed to training stress for some time and is extremely sensitive. Now, training is of course a stress. And when we're training really hard, that stress can be quite severe. But when the body is exposed to that stress consistently, i.e. five sessions uh, a week for an extended period of time, it builds up adaptations to that stress and is better able to cope with it. But after a four to eight week layoff, basically that slate is wiped clean and, and we're basically in a similar state to a newbie entering the gym for the first time. Now, I actually think one of the reasons for one of my follow-up infections was because of exactly that. I went back into the gym going way harder than I should and not acknowledging how sensitive my body would be to a training stress. And because my body was so overwhelmed by that stress and that initial comeback period, it wasn't able to have adequate reserves to deal with other stresses, i.e. bacteria in the body. And I think that that's why my body wasn't able to cope with a small infection like around my groin that shouldn't have turned into anything, but turned into a massive issue. So of course I learned from that this time and I've dialed it back in a big way. My, my sessions, although they're twice a day, they're very short and they're, they're split up. Uh, I don't take any sets to failure on compound exercises. There are no intensification techniques used whatsoever at this time. Still having two complete rest days, no cardio is implemented and my overall volume, so sets per session, is also reduced. In terms of the big picture, you're far better to just start low and work your way up allow your body to adapt over a sort of one to three month period and work your way back up to those intensities and those volumes. I think that is going to be a wrap up uh, for this video. Apologies if this video made no sense or provided no value whatsoever. They will improve very quickly as I get back onto a schedule. The comeback has begun. Now it's just a matter of transitioning from baby steps uh, into running strides. So it's gonna take some time, but I'm being patient with it, taking the small wins and small progressions as they come, but we'll be back at a full court soon enough, I don't know. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.